So now the Red Wings are on the clock at Little Caesars Arena. That's where they are convening for their draft room. As Steve Eiserman, what does he do? Where does he go? Commissioner Gary Bettman. Joining Steve Eiserman, Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Detroit Red Wings, to make the number six pick is 10-year-old Harold Washington Jr. Harold represents the thousands of children in the city of Detroit who are experiencing the joys of learning hockey through the Red Wings Learn, Play, Score program. Harold, take it away. Harold? With the sixth pick in the 2021 NHL Draft, the Detroit Red Wings are proud to select from Frolunda, Sweden, defenseman Simon Edmondson. Go Red Wings! <laughs> Way to go, Harold. Way to go, Stevie Y. So, boy, uh, a big, strong, dynamic Swedish defenseman. Stevie Y probably had some good memories with a Swedish defenseman teammate. Who would that be? Nick Lidstrom, oh, perhaps? Yeah. Hall of Famer? <laughs> Absolute stud? Wow. So, when it comes to Simon Edmondson, yeah. I mean, you're talking about the guy who's got size, he's got reach. Some are worried about the offensive upside he's going to bring to the table, but you have to kind of reel it back a little bit and say, if you're going to get a top two-pairing guy who's going to eat 23 minutes a night, we'll worry about the offensive upside later. Let him just take care of business in his own end. He plays with a little bite, and I like a lot of different things this guy does defensively. Here he is off the circle in front of the net. All right. Watch this little play here. Little dipsy doodle, no problem. And you know what? I'm going to take a hit to make this play so we get an easy exit out of the zone. No problem. Great awareness there. It leads to a scoring chance all the way in transition, all because of a great play and a little dipsy doodle in his own zone. Here, he comes out to challenge the shooter. It's a blocked shot. Finds where the puck is. Now he gets back into the play and he's wandering around, kind of looking for his man, scoping things out. They're able to get the exit out of the zone there just momentarily before he's able to break up that play with that good long reach. But Edmondson also likes to anticipate the play. Here's a rink-wide pass. Not on my watch, thank you very much. I'll step up and neutralize, and I will create a scoring chance not just for my teammate, but get the rebound for myself. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit more of that. The anticipation of trying to make a good play once again. I'll go behind the net, a little shimmy shake. There it is. One pass, exit out of the zone. So there are a lot of little subtleties in his game, including his ability to anticipate the play defensively and play some defense up ice. Saves you going back that extra 100 feet to go back and have to do it in your own end. 30th straight year, 30th. The Red Wings have picked a Swede. So this is a country they're very comfortable with. They've been very successful with Swedes. And they pick another one here who looks like he could be a real gem. Emily Kaplan with more from Columbus. Emily. Yeah, so his dad, Toby, is a police detective, and his mom, Osa, is a personal trainer. They're both very tall, and so is their son, Simon, who is six foot four. And those around him know that being that tall gives you propensity for back issues later in life. But Osa actually uses a technique called power plates. It's this vibrating platform that helps with flexibility and circulation. And Osa has been training Simon in that, and they think it's really helping. I actually talked to a scout in Sweden about Simon, and they said he's a big guy that can do the things that small guys can do when it comes to puck handling and finding solutions down low. And the scout told me when you have a player with that size that can do those things, it's very rare. So Stevie Y's got to be happy. Back to you guys. Thank you, Emily. Red Wings, the worst record over the last five seasons. He probably won't play this year. So we'll see what the season will look like this year uh, on the ice for uh, the Red Wings. Six of the first 13 picks were NCAA players. Previous record was four. You got some news? I have some news to break here. It appears that the Dallas Stars are going to be moving down from pick 15 and exchanging with the Detroit Red Wings at 23. Ooh. Perhaps they're going to be swapping. So, goalie? Could there be a goalie here? <laughs> I, I won't ask for it again. Yeah, no, the keep asking going. for it. The of course, goal you got to think that. At this point, you're that, a good lobbyist. That, <laughs> we're not even on Capitol Hill. And he's a Swede. And he's a Swede. Well yeah. set in the event that they go in that direction, or do they go Sebastian Cosa? I'm not sure, but I think it'll be either one of those two. All right, so Dallas looks like they moved down. Detroit moves up to 15 to pick next in front of the Rangers. I don't think it would have taken a goalie. Uh, St. Louis, Winnipeg. There's Steve Eisenman, Little Caesar Arena, where they have their draft room assembled this evening, getting ready to pick again. They picked at sixth. It appears they have moved up to 15. Dallas moves down. And again, many thought they would take the goalie here. 
uh, at some point, but maybe not. What do you think, Sam? Well, you acquire Nadelkovic, and you're trying to wonder, you get him a two-year deal, you're wondering if he's going to be able to carry the mail for you. But I always say, if you're going to draft a goalie, you should already have one because they take a little while to get there. That three- to five-year developmental plan for the goaltender, and you look at all the prospects that they 33 picks the last couple of years, 21 picks the next couple, at some point all these guys have to come together, and what do you need at the back end? Tender. Vasilevsky. You need, exactly. You need a tendy back there so that all your players can make some mistakes, give up some two-on-ones, and yet have the confidence that they're going to be able to go and score goals knowing that the defensive part is taken care of. A lot of people identify the Red Wings with Jesper Wallstedt, especially the Swedish goaltender, Correct. but some feel Sebastian Kosa at six foot six with some athleticism is the future, right? You talk about fighting for pucks through screens. He kind of has that game and the athleticism to recover. And he's gone through some adversity personally as well. And I, and I like when you have to travel and, and go over a few speed bumps on your path to getting there. Let's find out what Steve Eisenman's doing with this second, second-round pick, Commissioner Bettman. Uh, Dallas is trading pick number 15 to Detroit for picks number 23, 48, and 138, all in this year's draft. So Dallas sends 15 to Detroit. For 23, obviously a first-round pick, 48, second-round pick, and 138. Uh, so, Detroit, you're now on the clock. So there it is. So, Detroit, the pick isn't quite ready to go, but I imagine it'll be done quickly. When you make a trade like this, uh, Jeff, you know who you're taking, correct? Yeah, I think they're making the move. They, they're, they're thinking another team is, is uh, going to take a guy, and they don't want to take any chance, and they really like somebody. Their room's been pounding the table. And Do you like that return for Dallas, 23, 48, and 138? Is that about standard stuff? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a going rate if you look at over the years. Uh, when you go moving up and moving down, it looks like about right. You go to a familiar dance partner, Jim Nill and Steve Eiserman, who have known each other through the Detroit Red Wings organization. But I'm looking at Dallas here and thinking about Jim Nill, Joe McDonnell, and you're thinking about the last two drafts, they've only had nine total picks. Yeah. So now they've got to restart yeah. the coverage. They have a pretty good complement right now, but the additional two picks to move down a few spots is really helpful in that regard. And Detroit, 33 picks over the last yeah. three years. They can yeah. afford to give a few. Away. Yeah, we, we can't have too many players here right. now. We can pick one that we one that we want. So here are the top prospects for the Red Wings. Overall, Jeff, how would you evaluate the Red Wings' uh, you know, farm system right now, if you will, and young players? Yeah, I think it's really, it's on the come, right? He's yep. it's cider, and you're thinking about Lucas Raymond. And, right. And uh, I think they're doing a good job. It, that's, you know, this is how they did it in Tampa, and this is the same blueprint. And uh, as you build your team, you look, you know, you start to look down the middle, you look on the defense. Maybe Weeksy gets his... <laughs> gets his guy. <laughs> gets his, gets his, Goalie, uh, you've had great ones, you know. Yeah. Makes it all the difference in the world. You've had all these playoff runs. Are you jealous of Steve Eiserman's rope that he has in Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> this man has a lifetime contract, I think, yeah. as GM. It goes from here to Detroit. Yeah, he's earned it. Yeah. Yeah. He's earned it. Gary Bettman introduced Detroit. Uh, for the 15th selection in the 2021 draft, uh, we return to Hockey Town and Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. And Steve Eiserman, executive VP and GM of the Detroit Red Wings, will make the second pick in for the first round for the Detroit Red Wings. Steve? With the 15th pick, Detroit selects from the Western Hockey League's Edmonton Oil Kings, Sebastian Kosa. As his goalie, 17 1 and 1. 941 save percentage in the shortened season last year for Sebastian Kosa. Six foot six and athletic, Sam. You know, it, there's been a lot of things that this young man has had to go through in this rise to prominence. And he's a good community guy. The Hockey Gives Blood program, and he's an ambassador there. But you think about some of the personal adversity where the fires in Fort McMurray displace the family for three months. They get back into their house. They got to evacuate again because of the floods. They are able to stay some with, with some family in Calgary. But the start of this guy's career, he had to battle two veterans to get the net. He did it. He ended up moving one of them. One of them went to the Ontario Hockey League. And he's playing along and things are going good. He's got the cock of the walk. And then they acquire Beck Warm, who recently signed. And he says, whoa, son, hold on, man. The pro is coming into the nets here. And so instead of Kosa whining, complaining, you know, kicking rocks, he's got the lower lip out. He says, I'm going to learn from this guy. And he learned about preparation, warming up cooling down, stretching, eye exercises for the goaltender. And as a result of that, he grew, and that mentorship really meant a lot to him. Last two games of the year, doesn't mean anything for Edmonton. They were winning the division, no problem. Brad Lauer says, I'm going to give the young guy a shot. Kosa says, no, you're not. I want those games. And so he walks into Lauer's office and says, I'm going to take those games. 
Laura says, slow down, bud. Your, your numbers are really good here. We'll give you the first game and see what happens. Well, he lights it, lights it up there in that first game. And as a result, he ends up getting the second game. They win that one as well. And the numbers are Bugs Bunny-like yeah. for Sebastian Costa this year. Pretty amazing stuff for this young man. At six foot six. he always fits the category for an NHL general manager. He's not too small. Exactly. There's a lot to chew on here. Keep in mind, when we saw Steve Eisman, what he did with his archetype and what he did in building the Tampa Bay Lightning, they drafted Vasilevsky. We talked about that. Well, he strikes again. He goes for Kosa, another big, powerful goalie. He knows everything that Vasilevsky's been able to do for his former franchise. Not to mention, I do love this about Kosa as well. He trains with pro guys right now, and he's training with Carter Hart, and he's also uh, training with a few others in the area there in, in Alberta, and I respect that about him. He's getting in and around those guys. Tristan Jari, who's also an all-star, who is another alum as well of the Edmonton Oil Kings. Three and a half hours south of Detroit is Columbus, Ohio. That's where Emily Kaplan is with more, Emily. Sebastian might be the draft's renaissance man. His dad is Italian, didn't start skating until he's 40, now refs beer league games. Sebastian actually played football until he was 13. As a self-proclaimed big boy, played both center and linebacker. In fact, he was six foot four by the time he was 14 years old. Now, teammates say that he is a legendary chirper from the crease, but off the ice, he's a really hard worker. Every summer, he works at a tabletop shop. Carpentry, manual laborers, makes custom tabletops for restaurants and homes. So, guys, there's nothing this guy can't do. Bucci? <laughs> His brother calls him Seabass, and he's got Neely's Seabass character from Dumb and Dumber on, yep. on the mask. There he is. He looks very angry. I love that. He's ready to stop pucks. Detroit, you have ready, your ready to make saves. You have your goalie of the future. You look like Jack Hughes right now. You got that big smile I'm going right now. I'm beaming right now. Goal I will say, need. I will say on yeah. the goalie, yeah. whether or not you believe taking a goalie in the first round is right or wrong, what he did do is he traded up and got a guy that wasn't going to be there, right? Exactly. So he, he made a trade that where this guy wasn't going to be where he was. Gotcha. We do have a trade to announce. The Vegas Golden Knights have traded pick number 36 in the 2021 draft to the Detroit Red Wings in exchange for picks number 38 and number 128 in the 2021 draft. That means Detroit is now on the clock. With the 36th overall selection in the 2021 NHL draft, the Detroit Red Wings have selected Shy Boom from Sioux City of the United States Hockey League. The Arizona Coyotes are next on the clock. Yeah, Shy Boom is a, a big kid. I got to see him play at the uh, Prospects game. He played for the USHL club, plays for Sioux City. He's headed to the University of Denver, and again, 6'3", 210 pounds, left shot D. Comes from San Diego, California, kind of very interesting background. Brother plays as well, went to Shattuck. And I think when you see a guy of this size, Jeff, that's the thing that attracts you, because he skates. He was willing to jump into plays and make things happen. Absolutely. You're seeing a team jump up and get him, make a trade right now, and obviously they're attracted to his size, and you hear a lot of good things about him, that he's got a lot of upside on and off the ice as a kid. All right, back to you, Tony. He's fluent in Hebrew, has traveled to Israel <laughs> several times. Parents grew up in Israel. What do you know, Sam? What you see is a lot of this starts in minor hockey. You're looking at the Brick Tournament. It's huge, the Quebec Pee Wee Tournament. So you're going back well into the history of these players. And now what we're starting to see is, especially in a lot of the southern states where players retire, it was a nice place to live, so they end up keeping their family there. Florida's coming to prominence, so is the Texas area. We've seen it uh, a little bit in St. Louis with retired players there. Of course, Detroit has already been a hotbed. But you move now into California. And the Junior Kings program, we'll start to see some players come out of that program. That's where Shy came from. So we get back to the picks that are being made. The pace is picking up. Pick 70, Carter Mazur to the Detroit Red Wings. He was eligible to be selected in the 2020 draft and was passed over. Tri-Cities captain this year led all USHL skaters in shorthanded points with six. Jackson, Michigan native. He's going to enjoy this, going to the Detroit Red Wings, right, being a Michigan cool. native. Well, he grew up with a, as a Detroit Little Caesars graduate. Yeah. So, you know, when you do that, yeah, yeah you absolutely, you're going to be idolizing the Red Wings. He's the captain. Uh, not only does he play, but he's also the captain of the Tri-Cities in the USHL. He's got a high energy 
energy level. He's got extremely high compete level. And one scout says the strength of his game is that compete level. And we talk about character. When you have a high compete level, that means your character level is there. And that's something that the Red Wings, I'm sure every team wants to have. But uh, here's a local, a local Michigan, was it Michigander? Yeah, you know. Michigander, yeah. sure. Oh, school there. Spring Arbor Showcase. Yeah, yeah, we got an Ed Absolutely. Ed Maxonian, we got a Michigander. There you go. So I, 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 this is great. I think it's a great pick for the Red Wings. And, and he was, you hear scoring shorthanded goals, you hear a high compete level. Uh, you know, I, I'm sitting there thinking, wow, that, uh, that there's someone in that organization who, you know, had Reminds a high compete <laughs> level. Yeah. <laughs> and and not necess didn't necessarily always score shorthanded goals, but score a lot of power play goals. So yeah, this he scored is, this a few good shorties. Fit. Stevie scored a few oh, shorties. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't play in a power play. I didn't play against him there. But it, it, <laughs> you know, it's great when you have local players can be drafted your organization. It doesn't always happen, but the, this uh, this looks like a pretty good fit. I think it's a real feather in your cap if you get drafted by Steve Eiserman anywhere, anytime. Yes. We are back in Secaucus. Studio 21. 21 draft picks going back and forth. The Golden Knights getting pick 102. Detroit getting 114 and 155. Concert was canceled, but look who was drafted. Ooh, yeah. Redmond <laughs> Savage. Snap into a Slim Jim. EJ, he is not related to the Macho Man, but he is a good hockey player. And that's why Detroit drafted him. Please tell us more. He's also the son of Brian Savage, who used to play in the National Hockey League. He had a long career in the NHL. He's been part of the National Development Program there in Ann Arbor. And, uh, you know, really a, a good leader, a guy that gets his nose into the battle. I enjoyed watching him play in the Prospects game. I thought that was kind of part of, uh, of his kind of ability that he has. Uh, another kid that was uh, raised in Arizona and has some of that background as well. But uh, the bloodlines, again, we see it with players, uh, young players, the sons of former NHL players finding their way into the National Hockey League or into the draft, at least, en route to that. But uh, a really interesting young player and a real leader. So that's the thing that I took away from watching him play. His nickname is Red, and he's going to the Red Wings. Things just work out. Here we go. Liam Bauer uh, Nielsen to the Red Wings, continuing the winged wheel theme. He captained Sweden at the under-18 World Championship. Four points in seven games. The Gothenburg native. What else can we learn about this pick? Well, first thing you know about Liam, uh, going to the Red Wings, guess what? He is a solid two-way center, can dictate the pace of play. Uh, he, and again, we talk about growing. He needs to develop his strength and needs to develop his strength in his skating stride as well. But when you're a solid two-way center and you're 18 years old, uh, there's a lot of good that people look into it. And when you've got a leadership role in the and the scouts will say, well, he's a trusted, trusted player by the coaches. He's put in strong situations. And when you are that type of player, uh, that's why the Detroit Red Wings go, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a chance here. And again, another Swedish player uh, to the Detroit Red Wings. It's just amazing when the Red Wings pick a player from Sweden. You just, the first thing you think about, oh, here they go again. This guy's going to be another Henrik Zetterberg. Here he goes, like a late pick. This guy's yeah. going to be phenomenal. But uh, I think it's a good pick. And it's a project. Again, a young player. He's six foot. Uh, 172 pounds is what he's listed at. He's a good starts at a good size, can play in his own zone, and not everybody's going to be first line scorers. Next up, Oscar Plandowski. Now his dad is the director of amateur scouting for the Arizona Coyotes. His mom, Jill, prominent power skating coach in the Halifax area. Hockey is the family business, and he goes to the wings. Yeah, and they've gone all over the place to, to try and do it. And Steve Eiserman, of course, worked with Daryl Plandowski when he was back with the Tampa Bay Lightning, so maybe a friendly thing there to be able to draft his son. But his son does have a merit on his own. And, of course, where is the foundation of his game? It's that great skating ability. He's not a guy who's going to light it up in terms of the point production, but, again, I think he knows and understands what he has to be, use his skates to defend, get back on pucks early, make a good first pass, get it out of the zone, and try and work hard in that transitional game. I don't think he's a guy that's always going to be up there on the rush. I don't think he's a, a guy that understands when he should be able to join the rush. But, again, point producing is not going to be his calling card. It's his ability to defend with the good feet. Gortz, we understand you're a part of this scouting report, too. 
I actually saw him in, at South Kent High School, and uh, yeah, he, he has a lot of talent and uh, some upside. Always like, uh, like, it's a big night for Arizona guys that have kids, right? They're all getting their kids drafted, and it doesn't hurt that uh, this guy's mom is a skating coach, so I like the upside there.